Woo. Exponent time. All right, we're doing some exponents review with integers. Next time we'll tackle the fractions, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to take one step at a time. But as a quick review here of exponents, and I have a feeling that this is going to be exponentially fun. That was good. Uh, when we're multiplying with like bases, we add the exponents. So for example, if we had x squared times x to the fourth, we would get x to the sixth. We would add the two and the four. When dividing, we subtract our exponents. I'm going to change colors. I'm going to get cray right now, new color. If I had x to, say, the seventh over x to the third, I'd subtract the seven and the three, giving me x to the fourth. I'd also like to point out, what if we had something like the other way around, x cubed over x to the seventh? Well, then I'd have one over x to the fourth, one divided by x to the fourth. Make sure you don't just subtract and then also, oh, it's not in the denominator anymore. It's got to be in the denominator in that case. Awesome. Power to a power. Let's get a new color here. It's going to be fun. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go uh, blue. Um, let's see here. So if I had something like x to the third raised to the fourth, in this case, so there we go. It's a little better four. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix that four. There we go. I'd have x to the, well, what's 3 times 4? That's x to the 12th. Cool. Now, if you're ever wondering <clears throat> on a few of these properties here, especially when we're talking about the multiplying and the power to a power, if you were to write out x squared times x to the 4th, you would have x times x for the x squared, and then x times x times x times x for the 4th. That's six x's written out, hence why we have x to the 6th. This could be written out as x to the third times x to the third times x to the third times x to the third, right? Four times because of the fourth power. And then if you were to expand it even further, like we just did for multiplying, we'd have 12 of them all lined up, hence the x to the 12th. Whoop, whoop. All right, negative exponents. We do the reciprocal, flips upside down, right? So if I had, in the same fashion here, let's, let's continue. I'm going to go orange now. If I had x to the negative fifth, I'd have one over x to the fifth, one divided by x to the fifth. Excellent, wonderful. And one other thing that I do wanna add here is anything to the zero power is gonna be equal to one. So if I had x to the zero, that'll be one, all right? Uh, so maybe jot that down. If we go to the zero power, it equals one. That's great, so anytime you're in panic mode of exponents, Think back to these five rules that we have written down here now with the one that I added. All right? If you're stumped, think, okay, well, what can I do? Is that legal, what I'm doing? Is that maneuver legal, what I'm about to do here based on my five rules that I have? And then try the problem again. And that's easier said than done, but take some practice. Let's hop to it. All righty. Got some numbers to work with first. Eight to the negative second. Well, what did we say if we had it raised to a negative power? we would do uh, the reciprocal, right? We'd flip it. So we'd have one over, one divided by, I almost went right to the answer, eight squared. So if I have one over eight squared, that's gonna be equal to one over, one divided by 64. Boom, there's the first one. I like it, excellent. The next one, holy cow, we got two numbers, three over four. Well, reciprocal, right? Flip it around. So I'm gonna have four over, four divided by three, squared, and then I'll distribute this exponent in. And remember, it's like we have four to the first and three to the first. So two times one is two. That means that it's gonna be four to the second, which is 16. And then I'll have three to the second, which is nine. And there's my final answer. I could write out all those steps, but this is review. This should not, not be anything new. Okay, so, so we can simplify our, our step writing. I'll go with a new color here so we don't get anything mixed up. Um, Negative three to the negative third. My goodness, we're just throwing negatives all over the place. Well, first I'm gonna do the reciprocal. So I'm gonna have one divided by negative three to the third power. Now negative three to the third power, if we have a negative number to an odd power, it will retain its sign. So it'll still be negative. Three to the third is 27. So I will get one over one divided by 27. Negative 27, my goodness. Whew. Almost almost missed that one after I said it. Okay, so good to be careful here. Case in point. Last one. All right, I have this negative power. So I could do the reciprocal right off the bat. Um, 
but I'm noticing that when I eventually distribute this negative two, it's gonna go to this five, which then if that's in the, I'm gonna have to bring it, it's gonna be a lot of shifting around. So I think what I'm gonna do to attack this one, and there are different ways to go about these problems. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna distribute to both of these. Remember there's like a one right here in front of the five. That's a real squiggly one, but it's hard to write on this thing sometimes. So I have five to the negative second, because one times negative two is negative two, five to the negative second. And then I have x to the positive sixth. So notice how I get a positive exponent here. So that x to the sixth will stay. And then I'm gonna have x to the sixth divided by five squared, which is 25. So I can just write that right there. Whoop, whoop. Awesome. So far, so good. Bueno. So, we, whenever we see like exponents, like this eight to the n, three to the n, four to the n, uh, we start thinking like, oh, can, can I just like multiply those? Because they're all the same, then I'll multiply all the numbers together and we'll, it'll be great. Like for example, with numbers, we'd have three times two is six and three times three is six. Can we do that? No. When we're multiplying with like bases, we can add those exponents, right? Three plus three is six. I think I said three times three, sorry. Um, when we have like bases, we can add the exponents. That's not the case here. We don't have like bases. However, if you notice what we did here in this problem, we distributed the two to the four and to the three. Over here, I distributed the negative two to each part as well because it was all multiplication or in this case, division. What if I were to undistribute it, right? Take it out. So what I'd have then is eight times three over four, all of this, to the power of n, to the nth power. Hmm. Now I would have eight times three is 24 over four. And I would get 24 divided by four is six raised to the n. All right, there's my final answer. So I can't just multiply the bases and add my exponents because they don't have like bases. It's a, it's a different case and it's an easy thing to stumble through and make a mistake on. So in this case here, what I'd actually have if we're dealing with the numbers is that I would have three times two cubed, right? I wouldn't add the three and the three to get six. So now I have six to the third, which indeed is 216 as we see right here. That does end up working out. Otherwise we'd get something totally different. All right, so definitely a solid thing to jot down so you don't make that mistake. Moving on. Alrighty, some more examples, and we're just going through some of the tricky ones um, because this is a review and we're, we're trying to hit those difficult problems. So first one, we have x to the negative third times x to the fifth plus x to the third. Well, what can I do with that? These are all like bases of x, so I can go ahead and just distribute into that binomial. So x to the negative third times x to the fifth, I would add my exponents because they're like bases, and I'd get x squared, and then I'd have negative three plus three is x to the zero. And what did we say about anything to the zero power? It is one. There we go. Nice and simplified. So when we're simplifying, we mean no negative exponents and then reduce if possible, okay? Uh, lovely. So let's look at this one here. Yeesh. We got negative exponents on the inside there. We got squared. You know, I think some people might be tempted to distribute that exponent of two there, but that's a binomial. You cannot do that. You'd have to FOIL it. And that just sounds terrible as well. But what about this? We said anything to a negative exponent, we could do the reciprocal, right? We could flip it. So perhaps I could rewrite it as one over five, one divided by five minus one divided by 10 squared. Now I have two fractions being subtracted. I could get a like denominator, a common denominator, like so. Now I can subtract these. So now I have one divided by 10 squared, piece of cake now, right? One squared, 10 squared gives me one divided by 100. So I'm gonna distribute that exponent in. I'm gonna square the one, I'm gonna square the 10. Bingo, bango, awesome. Cool. I'm, I'm in a color switch and mood here. Let me go back to green. All right, next one here. We have six to the, or sorry, six X to the third 
minus 4x to the negative second over 2 divided by 2x to the negative fourth. Now, since I have one term in my denominator, a nice little strategy here would be to split this fraction, okay? And then we can simplify individually. So what I'm going to do is rewrite this as 6x to the third divided by 2x to the negative fourth minus, because of this, this bad boy right there, 4x to the negative second over divided by 2x to the negative fourth. All right. Now I can simplify individually. I like that. Give myself a little more room here. So I have 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then I have a fraction here. So I'm going to subtract 3 minus negative 4 would give me x to the 7th. Lovely. Then over here, I'm going to have 2 in my numerator because 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then I have x to the negative 2nd divided by x to the negative 4th. So negative 2 minus negative 4 is positive 2. Numerator is where it goes. If you're ever wondering where it's going to go, um, as far as you, like where your x is going to go when you're subtracting, you're dealing with negatives, um, or even when you're not dealing with negatives, wherever the larger one is, is where it goes. 3 is larger than negative 4, so it's going to be in the numerator. It's going to end up there. Negative 2 is a larger number than negative 4 because we're dealing with negatives here, so it's going to end up in my numerator. We are good to go on this one. I'm a fan of it. I like it. I'm ready to keep going because this bad boy over here, whew, yeesh. Again, a negative, a negative, ugh, terrible, right? No, we can handle it. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the reciprocal here. So I'm gonna have one over, one divided by four plus, and you know what, since we have already done this a couple times, I'm just gonna flip this one right there to be one over B. Actually, you know what, on second thought, I'm gonna keep it like this. Okay, because if I can simplify what's inside the parentheses there and it becomes a fraction, which I imagine it will because of the one over B, I can just do the reciprocal at the end. So let's go that route. Okay, so I'm, I'm changing course right away, which is uh, something that you might have to do with these exponent problems if you get stumped. Okay, so I'm going to get a like denominator. So it'd be 4B over B plus 1 divided by B, all the negative first. So now I'm going to have 4B plus 1 divided by B to the negative first. And what can I do now? Reciprocal, woo -woo, B divided by 4B plus 1. And we can leave it like that. There are no negative exponents. I cannot simplify this any further. So I am done with this problem. That is fantastic. Don't you think so, Jenny? You may wonder why Jenny isn't in this video yet. It's because there's a thunderstorm and she is a little bit scared, so she's hanging out there uh, in her in her thunderstorm spot. Um, but, you know, she's good. Okay, let's keep going. All right, a couple more uh, wonderful examples with negative numbers, negative exponents. Man, it's just we're throwing them at you because you can handle it, okay? You can handle it. Um, so for this one, again, I have, a, I have just a single term in my denominator. I'm going to split it because... That's generally a, a wonderful, easy way to go about it. Easy, you know, being relative here. So uh, y to the negative first divided by y to the negative first plus one divided by y to the negative first. Well, anything divided by itself is just one. And then over here, since it's one divided by negative, or one divided by y to the negative first, I can just do the, bring it to the numerator and it becomes positive y. So a problem that looked kind of scary wasn't that bad. There are other ways to do this one, um, and it can get pretty ugh, nasty, uh, but I think this is the cleanest way to go about it. So there you go. There's, there's a few ways to do it, but that was the quickest. So for this one here, there are a couple ways to look at it, and I'm gonna show you two things here. Um, I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go green again. I'm feel, just feeling the green. Um, all right, so I have x to the negative second. I have x plus x to the negative first. Now. Initially, I'm thinking, well, maybe I'll do like one over x squared, uh, one divided by x, you know, get rid of those negative exponents. But I'm also thinking, can't I multiply a fraction, numerator and denominator, by the exact same thing? That is okay to do, yes? I can multiply it by five over five if I want. I can multiply it by a million over a million, and it will remain equivalent. What if I think about my exponent properties, where if I multiply something with like bases, right? These are all like bases. If I multiply every, if I multiply it, um, 
with a like base, I would add my exponents. So what is my most negative exponent here? It's x to the negative second. What if I were to multiply my numerator by x squared? It would get rid of that negative exponent, right? It'd become x to the zero, which is just one. Well, I'd have to then multiply my denominator by the same thing so that it's equivalent. And in doing so, I'd end up with x to the zero divided by x to the third plus x. There's negative one plus two is one, so x to the first. And then finally, I'd have one divided by x cubed plus x. There are no further simplifications I can do here. I am done with that problem. All right. Sometimes uh, it can help to, to look at it in a slightly different way. Um, if I were to rewrite it as one divided by x squared over uh, x plus one divided by x, well, now I can think of this, and maybe I'll throw this over a one so we're dealing with fractions uh, and fractions. I can multiply by my least common denominator, uh, which would be x squared. So if I multiply by x squared here and x squared here, perhaps you might see the simplifications a little bit better. x squared times this one gives me x squared over x squared, which is one. And then x squared times this guy would be x to the third over one, so x to the third. And then times this one, I get x squared divided by x, which is just x. It results in the same thing. Perhaps you might see it better in this one. I honestly prefer this one myself, but I know different people see it in different ways. So I wanted to show you both to get to the same route or get to the same answer. Alrighty, another little math trick of the trades. Uh, simplifying using common bases. So let's check out this first example. We have two to the eighth, four to the negative fifth, and 16 to the negative first. You may notice that all of these can be written with a base of two. And here's what I mean by that. We have two to the eighth, four could be written as two squared to the negative fifth, and 16 could be written as two to the fourth, and we still have the negative first. So now everything's the same base, which makes it a little easier to simplify. Uh, we'd have two to the eighth, and then two to the negative 10th over two to the negative fourth. And now I can combine my numerator to be two to the negative second divided by two to the negative fourth. And then lastly, we would have to sub subtract our exponents. Negative two minus negative four is negative two plus four, which would be two. And since my larger one is in the numerator, it's two squared, which equals four. I am done, bingo, bango, awesome. Excellent, that's all by hand, right? We would expect you to do this by hand without a calculator. Um, you could find something like this on a no calculator portion of a test or SAT, who knows, right? So be ready for this without a calculator. Next one, feel free to pause it and try this one, use what we just used here, uh, and then uh, I'll go over it. Did you pause it and try it? Because you should. Okay, let's go for it. So 25 and 125 and five all can be written as a base of five. So I'm gonna have five squared to the third. And I honestly like to write it out like this. I don't like to just go right from um, this to this step. I, I think it's easy to make a mistake. So I think it's nice to write out five squared in parentheses, then deal with your exponent property of multiplying those. I just find that to be helpful and, and to mitigate any mistakes. Then I have five to the N over divided by, this is five to the third times two minus, or sorry, raised to the two minus n. So now what do we do? Well, let's deal with, um, we got two times three, right? Because it's five squared raised to the third. So our exponent property would tell us to multiply those and I'd get five to the sixth. And then I'd have times five to the n divided by, and then I'd multiply these. So I'd get five raised to the, well, it's three times two is six minus three N. Lovely. I'm gonna give myself a little more room over here. Well, what do I do in the numerator? If I have multiplying like bases, I would 
add my exponent. So when you're in these situations, you're like, ah, there's so much happening. What do I do? I feel like this, especially this right here is, is one where you're like, I'm in panic mode. What do I do? I've never seen a binomial in an exponent. Who does that? Right? Well, I know my exponent rules tell me if I have a power to a power, I want to multiply them. So that's what I did. Six minus three n. I just said to distribute the three. Boom. We're good. Go back to those five main rules. All right. So now, like bases in the numerator. Six plus n. Done. Who cares if we have a binomial in the exponent? We're following the rules. I'm just I don't make the rules. I'm just following the rules, right? I'm just a good, I'm just a good math person. And then I have five to the six minus three n. Oh boy, I have binomials in both exponents. I don't know what to do. Oh wait, let me go back to my basic rules here. When I'm dividing with like bases, what do I do with my exponents? I'm gonna subtract. So let's subtract them. And if you'd like, feel free, do a little side work. Six plus n minus six minus three n. Don't forget, it's a terrible three there. 3n. Don't forget to distribute that that uh, that negative. So I'd have 6 plus n minus 6 plus 3n. Yeah. All right. So my 6s cancel, and then I'm going to have 4n. Bippity bop. Just don't stop. Woo. 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 I like that one. That was fun. That was fun. Jenny uh, also agrees, but again, she's still hiding out from the thunderstorms. It's scary stuff for a dog. All righty. We got time for one more? We got time for one more? I think we got time for one more. All right. Negatives galore. Yeesh. Three to the negative first plus six to the negative first. All raised to the negative second. Don't even think about distributing that negative two. Okay? Because this is a binomial. You can't distribute an exponent into a binomial. I said, no, no. Perhaps. I'm going to start on the inside by writing it like this. 1 divided by 3 plus 1 divided by 6, all raised to the negative second. Perhaps I could get one fraction inside there by getting a common denominator. What is that going to be? Well, I'd have 2 divided by 6 plus 1 divided by 6, all raised to the negative second. And now I've got 3 divided by 6 raised to the negative second. What's 3 divided by 6? That's 1 half. <laughs> Man, I love these simplifications. I love when things work out like this. It doesn't always, but sometimes it does. All right, I'm gonna flip it, do the reciprocal, which gives me two over one or just two. And then I would change my sign of the exponent to a positive. I've addressed the negative exponent by doing the reciprocal. I have two squared, which is quattro, four. That's it. I know that got, a, that got intense there. Those are some difficult problems. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Clearly, I enjoy this far too much. But um, you guys have a wonderful day. America, freedom, rock and roll, Costco. Riverdog Jenny still hanging out here. You going to do all right, Jenny? All right. Make sure you follow her on the gram. Riverdog Jenny on the gram. Have a wonderful day. Deuces.